Say you wanted to tailor a snapshot in Gravity 2 to better suit your track, or create a preset of your own to unearth a new musical idea. Let me show you how easy it is to use the source browser page in Gravity 2, and explore the different ways you can set up your instrument to allow for a better flow of creative ideas. In the designer, loading a new sound is as easy as dragging a source to any of the three channels where you can set the range in which it's mapped, as well as create volume fades at the edges of the range. This allows for a seamless transition between different sources, which can be particularly useful when creating a preset with two distinct tonal regions, say low and high ranges of a complex pad. This lets you pick the most appropriate source for each range and creates a smooth timbral overlap to create a more cohesive sound. And by the way, each source in Gravity 2 has its own suggested range, which can be revealed by holding the command button on your keyboard as you load the sound. You can then modify its mapping to suit your needs or experiment with stretching them beyond recognition. The preview function at the bottom of the page allows you to hear a short portion of the sound as you browse through the sources. This can be set to automatically play a preview anytime you click on a source. or manually by clicking on the speaker icon. Once you've found the source that you like, you can use the solo and mute buttons to hear them in isolation while you tweak the engine. This can be particularly helpful when creating complex sounds like multi-layered pads or stacked rhythmic pedals. The banks are collections of 12 sounds mapped to individual notes and can be placed anywhere on the keyboard when working in the Gravity 2 designer. This is very helpful when combining them with single sources, say a bank of swells in channel 3 to generate incidentals while playing chords on a stacked pad in channels 1 and 2. Notice that whenever you have a bank of sounds loaded in the designer, you'll find the tuning keys at the bottom of the keyboard, which will let you select the root note for all the sounds in your banks. Another useful application of loading banks in the designer is that you can map them in the same range, which can be really interesting to explore stacking different sound sources, like subs and low stings to create monster impacts. And remember, each bank is going to be mapped on a different channel, so you can edit all of the effects individually, like adding a low pass filter on the subs or some delay and reverb on the things. When it comes to the menu and the menu Excel, you'll find that they're designed to work around the anatomy of the banks. These can be loaded in any of the available octaves by clicking the arrows on the keyboard diagram. The menu instruments are ideal to create your own sonic palette by loading a host of sounds while being able to focus on a single source by using the expand function. This is a great feature for when you find that one sound that inspires you and wish to have it fully mapped as a single source across the keyboard. If you wish to be even more selective with the sounds you've loaded, you can swap any of the individual sounds by dragging them from the source list directly to the key of choice. I personally find it very useful to load all of the different transitions, stings and impacts in the menu Excel and have them sitting in my DAW's template for when I need immediate access to them as I try to keep up with the flow of musical ideas. I hope this tutorial has given you some ideas on how to navigate Gravity 2's library of sound in a way that best fits your workflow. 
We'd love to know what your experience with the Source browser is. So let us know in the comment what's your favorite way of exploring the sounds in Gravity 2. See you next video.